So, Alien Romulus is uniquely set between the events of Alien and Aliens. If you're a new Alien fan, the quick rundown is Alien, Aliens, Alien 3, Alien Resurrection, a couple of those Alien vs. Predator movies, uh, Prometheus, and then Alien Covenant. The last two most recently were original director Ridley Scott. This is from Fede Alvarez, newcomer to the franchise, but not a newcomer to horror. He is the director of Evil Dead 2013. A lot of fun, that movie, and Don't Breathe, uh, which did real well. I remember when that came out in theaters. Uh, Alien Romulus is the story of Rain and Andy, uh, two space colonizers working on a Wayland yutani colony uh, where things have not quite been terraformed to their liking yet, and they really want to escape this awful hellscape they live and work in and get to uh, a planet nine light years away with sunlight and fields and grass where things are good, a, a paradise. Uh, but they can't do it. They're trapped. And and when they then they find out uh, one day from their friends Tyler, K, Bjorn, and Navarro uh, that there's a derelict space station up in orbit that they discovered before anybody else on the colony has figured it out. When, and that's when the six of them hop in their little spacecraft, fly up to Romulus, uh, this derelict space station just seems to be floating in orbit just above the asteroid ring where it may be impacting in 36 hours or so. And upon boarding the space station to look for hyperpods so they can, or cryopods so they can get into light sleep and go to where they need to go, that is when they discover some horrors of uh, alien origin. Uh, it is, of course, set between the events of Alien and Aliens. Like I said at the top, uh, Sigourney Weaver's character Ripley is supposed to be in hypersleep on the other side of the universe. We don't need to worry about any of that. What we do have to worry about is escaping alive in Alien Romulus. Uh, Andy, what'd you think? So I really enjoyed this, and I'm a big Alien fan, and I kind of saw these movies out of order, which is funny. Um, my, my very first Alien movie to see was Prometheus, which I really like, and that was back when everyone kind of hated it. And then I kind of went back and saw uh, the rest of the film, so it took me a while to really get the entire uh, franchise. But I thought this was r really great. I, I particularly like the first act, which is all the setup, which a lot of times in a movie like this would be very slow and kind of boring and you'd be waiting to get, oh, let me just get to the action. But I was really invested in our characters from the beginning and their plight of like, uh, we got to get off this off this mining colony. This is our plan. These are different character motivations. Um, we're introduced to our small crew who we know are probably doomed or mostly doomed uh which is a lot of fun and then we we do kind of play the hits uh of the alien franchises but i enjoyed that a lot of people i don't know you can't please fans because when you when ridley scott did something different with prometheus and an alien covenant people were like well we wanted to see more you know traditional alien stuff and so then now we get a, a movie that has more of that and everyone's like well why don't you do anything different um but no, I enjoyed this all the way through. I thought there was a lot of good action, the effects, like the settings, like there was a lot of bragging by the production about how they built a lot of these these sets and uh, they feel very ta tactile. Um, a lot of good mood, a lot of good action. I really enjoyed this. Yeah, I had a great time with Alien Romulus, which is funny because leading up to it, I started seeing like, you know, inklings of Twitter reviews. Um that were pretty negative. People were pretty harsh on Alien Romulus going into it. And I was really surprised people coming out and be like, oh my God, it's the biggest bomb of the year. I can't believe it. Nobody saw it coming. And I was thinking like, w are they just exaggerating? What do they mean? And I went and saw it and had a great time. I think Alien Romulus is a lot of fun. I don't know what people were expecting. I do think having seen all these movies, it is a very clever plucking of the best parts from like six different Alien films. But my God, what do you people want at the summer box office? Like, how is that not working? It has great effects. I love the look of the movie. The cinematography is stunning. And when it needs to go to 11, it pushes the amp all the way to 12. It's fun. It's serious. It's wacky. It's Alien Romulus, dude. Like, God, people take movies too seriously, I think. So I'm excited to talk about it because I think this movie is... A multitude of different, like I said, the best parts of Alien movies, and it's important to mention at this point, we don't do spoilers on Oscar film reviews, so we're not going to spoil anything for you. We'll talk around things where we can, and we'll keep it tidy, because we got some trailers to talk about, and we got to talk about, uh, boy, my brain just walked right off a Jackpot. cliff. I knew where I was going with that. Jackpot! Yes! The most memorable <laughs> film of 2024! So for Alien Romulus, I want to start with 
The look of the world. I think that's the best thing. Boy, Fede Alvarez has got a good set designer. And I think they used a lot of the original talent from the Alien series. I remember them talking about plucking a CGI director from here and somebody from here. And, and I don't have exactly their credentials on those. But man, the look of Alien Romulus is so fantastic. The technology is this like... 80s CRT flashing light and blinking knob covered screens and panels that all look so kinetic. And on top of that, like incredible lighting down big hallways, right? Like this is something Feta Alvarez is really exceptional in like capturing practical sets, physical effects, updating with CGI where we can, and most importantly, filling out with really, really incredible sound design that I think nobody's talking about. Not enough. This is one of the best sounding movies I've seen all year. Uh, it, it's really, really fantastic. The look of Alien Romulus is top class. Like, no, no complaints. I think it is a really great looking movie. Yeah, that's what this franchise is kind of known for is is creating these very convincing environments where you have these kind of dirty derelict ships because it's it, I saw this great essay that that said alien is kind of the opposite of a lot of space movies where space is is defined as man's highest achievement like we're navigating the stars and look how complex our technology is and and in the alien universe it's kind of different where it's like yes we are doing those things but everyone's kind of an indentured servant and it's real grimy and everyone's just struggling to get by and that's how the world and in, in these ships feel like they're big they're dank they're dark it's complicated but you still have you, you know space flight and that that kind of thing and all the science stuff looks real real convincing all all the you know the different rooms we, we got a lot of fun just different things going on there, there's a section where we have uh the gravity in the ship is kind of it's like the gravity generator has to be like recharged or rebooted and, and so that your gravity kind of goes in and out a cu couple of times which is a fun section so it's all that just works so well. They do such a good job of really convincing you of of this universe and this world. Yeah, it's great setting for our cast, who is small but mighty, I think, where they need to be. Uh, we've got functionally six people, uh, Rain and Andy, played by Kaylee Spaney and David Johnson, who are functionally our protagonists. Uh, Rain is a young colonizer. Andy is her android kind of assigned brother uh, by her father, who's kind of out of the picture. Uh, Andy is not a high-functioning android. He's got some kind of problems. He is maliciously made fun of. Nobody respects him. They do not think of him as any kind of real being because he's a synth, right? He's a synthetic. Actually, great su uh, setup for one of our other characters, Bjorn, who's just kind of a dick to Andy all the time, <laughs> which is good because you start to not like him, and you know he's going to be alien fodder at some point because that's how these movies work uh tyler and Kay and bjorn and navarro make up the rest of the crew these other colonizers who tell rain and andy about their plan to go up to this derelict space station steal some cryopods and hit the road for their desired planet nine light years away uh they're all great like they're all simple they all have unique silhouettes they don't look like one another they sound different they're all charismatic in their own ways bjorn is mean tyler is a leader Kay is kind of a, a follower background character uh, with her own history and Navarro is their fearless pilot buzz buzz cut shaved head like the six of them are small and mighty and they work great for what they're supposed to be like they they they're grungy their costume designs fine and you know going into it that they're obviously going to be running into some problems small crew plus alien movie does not usually mean good things for crew but I think the movie does a good job of like earning Earning, earning its earning its kills where it needs to. You know what I mean? Like they're juicy and gory and bloody and satisfying in a way that I don't think hurts the picture at all. I, I think it's classic alien stuff. I was very pleased with it. Yeah, I, I definitely wanted to get into, into our cast a little bit here. Really surprising breakout from uh, David Johnson, who plays the the android Andy. Um, he, because he, he is like... Um, a decommissioned android that's been saved by rain's father and and he's funny enough he's been programmed to protect her but also to tell dad jokes um but he at first I, I thought he was just someone who was like slow or disabled and then it, it's kind of very quickly revealed that he's a synthetic but he he, he also kind of gets the joy of 
of playing two characters because he he gets a kind of an upgrade early in in the film um where his whole personality shifts and so it, it's a really fun time but that that performance is one of the best in, in the film uh generally and our our whole crew is, is a lot of fun kaylee spaney who initially i would i thought she's kind of backseated in in the first half of the movie and then she's definitely um the forefront the rest of the time but if, at first i was like when, when are we gonna get more of her and then of course Isabella Merced, who who uh, famously played Dora the Explorer, which is funny. Uh, she really goes through through this movie. She's uh, doing her best to to survive, um, and then the everyone else is a little bit forgettable. But we we do have a you know our classic cast of doomed characters. It'll be interesting trying to guess who will and won't survive. Yeah, and let's talk about that survival. We got to talk about the aliens, right? The look of them, the feel of them, the sound of them. Aliens are good stuff in this movie. Uh, I can comfortably say that the movie, I think, leans more aliens than it does Alien. Alien has one alien with our group of space truckers on the Nostromo. Aliens has a few, which is functionally where we're at. There's more than one being to worry about. A, you got your traditional face huggers, of which if you've seen the trailer or you're watching our live stream where you can see right now, uh, a lot of face huggers. And a lot of face huggers leads to usually a lot of aliens. That's traditionally how it goes, right? Uh, This movie does take some liberties, I think, in things like gestation period, how long it takes between when a face hugger grabs onto your face and implants an egg into you to when it turns into the thing that bursts out. And then when that thing goes from like a small thing to a big thing admittedly it does make some leaps i think but otherwise like that gives us a lot of opportunities for hilariously gross practical effects wildly sexual hugely uncomfortable hilarious i was so into it dude like the slime and the gross things that totally look like genitalia like way too much and all of that's a lot of fun when people start you know bleeding and getting murdered and dying and you combine all of that with uh not only good effects like we talked about in the look of the film and, and but also tools that our characters use uh, in the trailer you'll see one character has like this x-ray like scanner thing that they put against their back so you can see through their chest and you can see the thing wiggling around in them which is just great and then there's another sequence with a gun that has an auto fire like auto aim ability and they really show you exactly how it works on the screen the gun turns you can't miss like little touches like that a lot like Blade Runner like help fill out the world it feels like a real full natural world that people are in because they're using tools that are fitting of the setting to fight against the very thing they're trying to get away from like rock solid tons of fun dude yeah i i wanted to kind of touch on that this movie does a good job of uh dealing with tension both in different situations where you have to you know, try try to sneak by and not get noticed, but also things like you might have to choose but who's going to live and who's going to die because you can, maybe you can't save everyone. And so then you have to pick who who's going to survive. And uh, one of the things that I loved about the pulse rifle, we see it in the trailer. And when we get to the, in the movie, it really teases with w- it teases it uh, to us quite a bit because we we see it. People get their hands on it. We learn how it works. But it's a while until until it finally uh, goes off. But, but when it does, it's very satisfying. But it's it's a great exercise in intention because you're just waiting for that thing uh, to unload. Yeah, and I think I to talk about the negative of the feature, like I, I and when, again, we're not spoilers here, so we won't get too into it. But I think the movie does have issues with pacing that people don't like. Mainly, not that things don't happen because it's a fast two hours. I, I think this movie actually is paced really well. But that it's got some wacky elements that feel out of place for what it is. It starts slow and it's small crew, but then they go up to the space station and there's more than one creature. And then they find an antagonist kind of character that is wildly divisive that we can't really talk about on this show because it'd be spoilery. But uh, that's odd. And then people have talked about how the third act gets real crazy. It's not really the third act. It's really like the last 20 minutes of the movie. But for what it's worth, I I genuinely had a good time watching that stuff. I was like, I was like big grin in the theater. I was like, this is great, dude. Like, this is something I didn't expect. I didn't see this coming. It's a fun summer blockbuster. Like, and I think Alien Romulus knocks it out of the park. At, le- at least at the box office, it looks like it does. So I'm, I'm boy, I'm just surprised to see people be like, oh, it's bad. I, I don't know. Andy, what do you, did these things knock you off? Were you not into this? I was totally into it. I, I know that it's some, you know, it's 
doing things that we've seen before. It it is playing the hit. Uh, but man, I was I was in in my theater. There's a moment where a very a kind of classic callback line happens, and my theater ate it up. People were yelling, clapping. Uh, I mean, the majority of people are loving it, and the box office reflects that. You know, if people didn't like those things, it wouldn't be doing near as well as it is. Uh, the fact that it is shows mo- the majority of people not on film Twitter are are really enjoying it. Yeah. Not only did I enjoy Alien Romulus, I'm looking forward to what is likely coming next. Because like we talked about in the news, this movie has made its budget back already. It is almost guaranteed to be getting some sort of sequel or follow up, whether that keeps these characters and moves somewhere else. You're going to have to go watch the movie and find out. But it's a good time. Yeah, like I, I'm with Andy. Like I, I, People in my theater were eating up the cheesy lines. There is a jump scare towards the end of this feature that got one guy in the front row in front of me so good. I got to see him in the dark. Full up, popcorn goes up in the air. It was the best jump scare I've seen all year. Like It's a great time. It's a great time. And, and I'm, I, I, I feel odd reading reviews that people didn't really get into it because, man, I, I, I had so much fun watching it. Any other thoughts for our recommendations, Andy? I think I'm ready. Andy, would you recommend Alien Romulus? Yeah, I absolutely would. I thought it was a lot of fun. It It is scary. It does have scary moments, but it's it's more than that. It's the feel. We, we have good characters. We we have a lot of our kind of classic alien moments that we, we've come to know and love. And it's it's a fun ride. It is playing the the hits, no doubt, but it it's a good time all the way through. And it's definitely setting up for some more films that I'll, I'll definitely be excited to be there. So highly recommend. Yeah, I'm in the same boat. Like, Alien Ron, this is a lot of fun. Um, don't go in expecting too much. It's like a greatest hits concert in the best way. Like, tons of fun. Remixes the best parts of the franchise. Admittedly goes too far in some places. But also, like, I think that can be a good time in its own right, right? Like, I I think Alien Romulus is a lot of fun. Uh, I would recommend go see it in a theater. Go see it big. Go see it loud. I saw it in a Dolby theater. My seat was shaking when the ship was taken off at the beginning. It rocked, dude. Totally go see Alien Romulus. And with that, we should move into some trailers, some upcoming stuff that we want to talk about this holiday season. I'm excited to get into it. Uh, Andy, you mind uh, introducing this for us? It's time for the trailer park. (laughs) 